Louis Sahar, he played 20 times for France. He pulled on some of the most famous shirts in world football. Manchester United, Tottenham, Everton. He was part of squads that won the Premier League, Champions League, Football League Cup. He was a gifted striker. He blended bullish target man traits with explosive pace, excellent technique, and he scored 124 goals for club and country over a 16-year professional career that included the 2006 World Cup. And it's a great pleasure to have him on the show for the all-new Kia Sportage, which has been unleashed. Welcome to SEN, Louis. Where do we find you? I'm in uh, south of France. I needed a son after 15 years in England. I'm sorry. Well, magnificent. That's not a bad move in our book, I wouldn't have thought. How do you look back on your career, Louis? It is hard to summarise a person's life in a 10 or 15-minute chat, but satisfaction for you, some regrets, some amazing highs, some real lows, of course, due to injury and eligibility at the worst possible times in some of those seasons. But how do you look back on it all collectively? Uh, privilege. The the world is privileged because, yes, I I was in love with my, with my sport and I had the chance to play with the big... Big players, big managers, uh, play for my country. So along the line, you you have uh, the disappointment, and that's part of uh, the journey. I really uh, cherish that. So I think uh, I can only say privilege because, as I said, uh, I managed to to have the way you know, people who like to to be at my my place. So very lucky. I think you're still the owner of the fastest FA Cup goal in, in history, aren't you? 25 seconds, 2009 final uh, uh, against Chelsea playing for Everton. Must have been a, a pretty amazing moment. Yes, um, the moment is it's unbelievable. But, uh, I want to back. Uh, it's one of the, the regrets because uh, I would have preferred to score uh, the, the last 25 seconds of the game, you know, <laughs> basically uh, and not holding any records. Uh, um, so, yes. It's a special moment because arriving in the uh, FA Cup final is just amazing. But, uh, you know, this regard doesn't mean much for me, you know, really. Can, can I ask you, Louis, about the start? I want to go right back to the start mm. of your career because just reading about you and I'm fascinated with, with your journey. Your father was a mechanic. Your mum was a nurse. She's come from a pretty basic upbringing. Not a lot of money floating around. Things were pretty tough for you. And then you arrive on the scene and that big... Those checks start rolling in, the paydays start arriving, and what that does to your life. And how did that sit with you and your family? And what sort of changes did that make in a hurry? Um, in a very, very quick um, way to explain, it, it does. Uh, res- let's say you ha- you have to understand the the, the process because those things uh, happen so fast. You are not educated. The parents are not very prepared uh, either. So you you get a uh, that sensation that uh, you have now some kind of like power uh, over your your parents or whatever like the your entourage and 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 they understand straight away so they protect you in certain ways they talk to you in a certain way it's a different education because it's um it, it's it's so fast and they they don't want to make mistakes and they don't want to upset you so all this is like kind of like creation of a bubble that uh, it, it's not uh, sometimes uh, very, very good uh, for your development. So it was uh, great as well because it's all about um, the, that kind of excitement. The, 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 you know, it's, it's brilliant. You know, football uh, uh, players, when they experience that, it's, it's just great, uh, you know, in, into your blood. Uh, there's so much emotion. We love that. But at the same time, uh, in terms of like family, in terms of like, the, the friendship, it, it changed things, you know, a little bit. So it was a roller coaster. The Premier League, Louis, that you touch on there, I mean, you caught the eye of Manchester United. You went on to play at all the clubs that I mentioned. The, the money is huge, the fame, the scrutiny as well, the, the traps that come with playing in that league. I mean, what was it like, life in the fast lane, when you're absolutely at your peak in the Premier League? Yeah, it was a um, dream come true first. You're... you're you uh, awake and you see things that you dreamed and uh, you realize that it's totally real. Um, it's um, you've seen it before. So, but uh, <laughs> you you really enjoy and trying to enjoy everything. But the pressure um, was was on. But I think that every everything was uh, coming naturally because I was working really hard for it. It 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 hasn't like land on me and uh, just like uh, oh yes it's a uh, He's got a great left foot, you know. All this came down to to hard work and and education. So I had to focus a lot um, and and forget what I've done uh, in terms of success. Whatever I scored a goal, I needed to keep my place. So, so my aim, if I wanted to improve every day, 
it, it was to really uh, keep my focus. So on the same time, I say all this emotion and and having a sense of purpose, uh, it's to be the best you can, you know, you can you can be. Um, I was uh, at the end of my career, I realized that I didn't enjoy as much. I should have like really opened my eyes a bit more and and really take the time to yeah uh, enjoy and be a kid uh, as much as I could. Um, that's 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 the the focus, the drive that you need, and at the same time you need to have the right balance. So it's it's brilliant. So that's why I I feel like I I don't have any regrets. It's more frustration. Frustration is it's part of a of like a facing a big opponent or strong opponent and and lose. It happens, but uh, it's nothing to do with regrets because I never cheated or done something bad to anybody. So I'm pretty pretty straightforward on that. Louis, at Everton, you shared a locker room with Tim Cahill, who is uh, widely considered one of the best uh, footballers our country has produced. What was it like sharing the locker room with Timmy? Funny. <laughs> Funny first, because he's a great lad. And at the same time, uh, uh, again, I, I speak about our walking. The guy is a machine and uh, I really enjoy uh, competing with him, uh, uh, play with him. And on the same time, uh, the actual kind of like awareness, like um, he's, he's not lived in a bubble in a way that he was aware of people, he was aware of his country, he was aware of like um, how to improve things. So I really like that. I think it's, uh, it's a, uh, a role model for, for me. So my time in Everton was, a, was something special, but after we keep really a good relationship because of that, because he's down to earth and, and, uh, and, and he's try hard to do whatever to improve uh, the society. So I really like the guy. Uh, we have to ask you about Sir Alex Ferguson. I'm sure you get asked about this all the time. One of the biggest figures in the game, of course, certainly in the in the Premiership. What was it like like playing under the, well, the king of stoppage time, wasn't he, Sir Alex Ferguson? What was it like playing under him? Yeah, no, it, it was amazing because uh, it was not just a coach uh, or manager. It was like a mentor, someone who re- you can really uh, rely on and uh, and, and gets really on a very easy way, uh, advices that you can keep for life. So, you know, like you, you, you really get responsibility, courage, uh, values, understanding about the, the, the kind of risk you have to take in, in life. But on the same time, you, you have to, to really be focused on hard work. It's, it's not about just talent and all that. So all this was, was amazing because I, I keep that in my pocket today. So uh, it was amazing, but I've got so many to- stories about uh, him personally, especially when we were winning trophies um, and having a sense of like accomplishment. This guy was not satisfied. He, he always like think about improvement, dedication, about how, how we can improve and, and work harder or better. So this focus, it was amazing for me. Can you describe to us, from the outside looking in, that just just dream of these sorts of moments, that first goal at Old Trafford and just the noise? Uh, I think it would have, would have been a 04, 05 for yourself. What can you can you let us in a little bit? What that was like for you personally? Yeah, you know, when you when you look back at those moments, it's like feel natural. Uh, again, it was a lot of hard work the week before. Um, I just signed for the club and had a kind of pre-season um, really hard. But um, straight away, the manager put me uh, straight on the, on the first um, first game play and, uh, and it felt natural. And believe me, the sensation is like I've been there before. So it was not just my first game in some strange way. I felt like so connected. The, the players I, has like helped me a lot. Uh, took me through it like it was like as I said natural. So the the noise and the actual connection with the fans was the same. I felt already out there. It's it's really strange. I, I really enjoyed it and I felt like I was already part. So I, I don't even like remember having you know that uh, feeling when you have to sing you know like that banter where you're just a new player <laughs> and you've been uh, asked to sing on, a, on the chair. I didn't even do that. So I felt like I was already part of this uh, family. It was just amazing. And I just like had moments uh, after where he made it like really a uh, strong suggestion I will never forget because it was more on a moment where I was not maybe as good, uh, maybe injured. I felt like the love, it was just amazing. It was just not the noise, it was just proper care, proper care. 
You're sitting in the locker room after the game. You've, you've had a win or you, you, you're in great form and you've got pl- people like Rooney and Ronaldo and all those guys Van sitting, sitting around the edges. And, and you lock eyes and you, you're thinking, what happens after games? Do you get to catch up with these people? Do you, do you spend time with them at their venue or going out together? What's that like? Um, it depends. You know, it's uh, some moments, especially when you have like, like um, two days to recover, you know, you don't have much time. You know, it's like, uh, obviously, it's all about uh, recovery. Um, obviously, you enjoy. But uh, as I said, uh, um, it's it's all about the next game. So, yes, we had moments where we had all those uh, uh, dinners and, 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 and uh, great uh, kind of like parties. But uh, I, I will I will think that uh, most of the time it was really private where you, you do your own things. Uh, you actually try to enjoy your family, your own family. So those moments where we really enjoyed was in training grounds. It was like this banter in the hotels, um, this like kind of the challenges the, that we uh, all like. And, you know, when you you take gambles and say, oh, yes, how many goals is going to score? And all those like moments where you do that with the best players you could ever imagine. So it it was just like competitiveness, around competitors and and to win and was like just for me it was a dream because i i i came into the game for those moments really is to compete with the best having that uh, kind of like sense of um of um ego that you have to you know to to master in some way where we, we have to show confidence arrogance sometimes and on the same time like be a team and an individual that can remain uh, and play. It was just like very, very strong emotionally. Louis, just a couple of quick ones before we have to let you go. Toughest defender that you played against? I will say a pair. Uh, we asked me a lot uh, this this question, but Rio Ferdinand and Vidic, you know, I think, yeah, it's, it's really hard because those guys uh, complement each other. Uh, on one-on-one, I was okay. <laughs> And the most talented teammate that you ever shared a locker locker room with? Oh, teammates. Oh, that's a good question. I think it's Paul Colden. Because, uh, yes, as a, as a teammate, uh, uh, alongside Rune, we are the two who really were so important for the team. Uh, it was just unbelievable. I really felt connected with those two. We had a caller ring him before, and he wanted to ask you if this is if there's any yeah. truth to this or not. Was there a chance you were going to come out for the FFA Cup and play for the Caulfield Cobras? Do you know anything about that? In, in Australia, in 20, Australia. 2015, 2016, we had a caller ask if that was ever going to happen. Louis, is that news to you, or do you remember that? Uh, ring the bell. Uh, it happens to me in Spain, actually, like two years ago. Um, in Australia, maybe it's... Uh, happens because uh, after Sunderland has uh, kept some kind of contact down here, but I couldn't guarantee you the name you just mentioned. So That's okay. I don't know. <laughs> we were testing it. It was a while ago. Yeah, we'll yeah. let you go, Louis. Just as we do, we also get text messages in here at real time at the station. And I have to read this one out to you. It's come from someone who says they went to the 2009 FA Cup final with some mates. They found out their wife was pregnant that day. And he said, I'll name my child after the first goal scorer. We were all barracking, he says, for Bratislav Ivanovic. That didn't happen. True to his word, Louis Golan entered the world nine months later. So there you go. You, you inspired <laughs> a new one. <laughs> best, best first name ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, so good to talk Wait, to you. Thanks thank for you. being so generous with your time and, and well done all you achieved and, and best luck with the future. Thank you very much. See you guys.